I know you're on this channel because you want to get help and you're wondering what's in it for me and how is this guy from California going to help me? Promising I'm going to help you. Just give me 10 minutes or less to help you understand exactly what judges want to hear from you as a defendant or if you're trying to get off probation early. But frankly, this whole message applies to trying to get more halfway house time, early release programs, first step back, all that good stuff. But help you understand exactly what judges want to see from you as the defendant and one thing they actually hate. Now, for the cynics out there, and it's okay to be cynical. You found me on YouTube. Who, who am I? There's a lot of research out there. I encourage you to do your due diligence if you're going to allow our team to come into your home and help guide you and your family, whether it's the YouTube, books, blogs, hiring us, or et cetera. So it's good to be cynical. And I share that to disclose or mention that you may be wondering, it's in Justin's interest to say all of these things because he'd like for us to schedule a call, pick up the phone, and have you retain our team. We'd love to help you. We think you can. But if you are that cynic, the message that I'm going to convey to you, I'm simply channeling from what federal judges have told us. Our team has sentenced more than 1,000 defendants. I've been to more than 1,000 sentencing hearings. And two judges, federal judge Stephen Boo and Mark Bennett, had the courage to come on our YouTube channel. But the truth is we've interviewed and interacted with myriad judges. So there's a lot of evidence with what I'm going to convey to you, channeling federal judges, whether they're liberal, conservative, male or female. It all comes down to what you can do as the defendant. So to help make this argument that judges want to hear from you in your own words, if you've pled guilty, that you identify with victims, you express your remorse, lessons learned, what are your plans moving forward? To help make this argument about what judges want to hear, I'm going to build in a video, play a little snippet of a video with Judge Stephen Boo. And he was interviewed by my good friend and business partner, Michael Santos. So let's just listen together for a moment. Because they have thought about how they got there, the things in their life that got there, and the things they're going to do, that they're going to do to improve themselves, regardless of what my sense is. And so coming in and being genuinely remorseful, and not just saying I'm sorry to everybody in the courtroom, but knowing who the victims are and, and trying to heal that regardless of my sins, and just truly self-evaluate themselves and figure out how they got in this spot and start making conscious efforts to improve. So let's talk about that before we go to the next question. Evaluate. Well, how are you going to do that? You can hire someone to write an evaluation. Some of our clients do that, and that can be helpful. That is a third person, a third party writing an evaluation of you. Again, can be very helpful. We have clients who have substance abuse issues, get an evaluation. Clients who suffer from gambling issues, get an evaluation. I'm not saying it's not helpful. I haven't said that. What I'm conveying to you is you've got to do that evaluation. You've got to convey, albeit through a personal narrative or a sentencing statement. Community service can be a wonderful opportunity to self-evaluate and use this experience as a tool to educate and inspire others. We've created a very boutique and new com community service program through White Collar Advice and Prison Professors and Compliance Mitigation that you may have interest in. If you do have interest in it, call the number here or send an email and, and we can discuss it. But whether it's community service that we can assist with or you go elsewhere, listen to what Judge Boo just said, self-evaluate, understand the decisions that led you there. That can only come through introspection of thinking about what led you there and how you'll become better moving forward, always putting the victims first. It's not about you and how your life is falling apart and imploding. It's all true. I remember it hasn't been so long for me, but it's evaluating the stakeholders. And in this case, it's how a federal judge may perceive and think of you. Let's continue on with the video and I will close this video with the one thing the judges absolutely hate. Oh, so let's continue. When you, you spoke about remorse quite a bit there, and I know a lot of times defense attorneys will articulate the remorsefulness of the client. What type of weight do you put on a defense attorney's statement about the defendant's remorse? I don't want to say zero, but I'm up there at about one and two percent. Um, most of the time, I'm paying that defense lawyer, whether they're a public defender or CJA attorney. I expect them to do that. Uh, what is much more meaningful to me, and I believe most of the other judges that I know, is if you believe that that defendant is truly remorseful and give some thought about it. Um, and it's one of those things, it's just like if your kid throws a baseball through your window and you say, I'm sorry, 
that's one thing. If the kid throws a baseball through the window and is busy cleaning it up and doesn't try to blame it on Bobby next door as a contributing somebody, but I'm fixing it and I really know what I've done here and I've thought about it and I can see how it's affecting you and others. Um, that's really meaningful. And you can usually see it. I mean, not that federal judges have some special power to tell if somebody's saying BS or not, but there's a speech that I think every public defender gives. Okay. So let me wrap this up and really hammer home what he said here. Judge Boo just said, you can usually see it. Well, that aligns with what Judge Benita Pearson said to me on stage a few years ago. Essentially, she said, I know when defendants have done the work. Defendants should, see, should treat sentencing like a full-time job. So I am conveying to all of you, you've got to invest the time, you've got to create the content. And that comment of one to 2% influencing him coming from lawyers, that's been off putting to some lawyers. I don't know why, Judge Boo is a lawyer. He's speaking openly and honestly. Your lawyer, much like a, a, someone who writes an evaluation of you, is paid to put you in the, the most positive light, is paid to articulate why you're worthy of leniency. And I hope they do it well. What I think he mentioned is it's somewhat discounted because they're paid to say it. So I'll close then with the one thing that federal judges actually loathe and hate, and I've been to enough sentencing hearings to know, here it goes. Do not ask your judge for probation in your narrative or in your sentencing statement. Do you want to know why? It's clear. The judge knows you want probation. The judge knows you don't want to go to prison. Rather than asking for the obvious, you have got to demonstrate through your actions. Like he just said, if you broke my window, don't say I'm sorry. How are you gonna fix and repair the window? That is the whole idea of mitigation, of articulating through your own efforts and words and actions why you're worthy of leniency. So don't be lazy. Don't be foolish. Don't ask for the obvious, I want probation. That requires no work. It's just a sentence or two. It's utterly useless. You've got to work under the idea that a federal judge appointed by a president of the United States will invest the time to read the memorandum, the narrative, invest the time to go through your community service work. And through that effort, See, okay, he's invested the time. He has self-evaluated. He has demonstrated that he identifies with victims. And I'm not sure this guy's ever going to return to another courtroom. That's the trick. Don't be lazy. Don't outsource all of the work. Do not specifically ask for probation. Now, there is a caveat. Your lawyer can ask for probation. Your lawyer in the sentencing memorandum can articulate all of the cooperation you did, all of the money that you might have paid back, all of the congratulations and how awesome and fantastic and great you are should come from the lawyer selling it. I'm of the opinion, this is a very subjective process. You should use your own judgment. You should ask your lawyer what their opinion is. Hold him or her accountable. Use your judgment, it's a subjective process. Over the last week, I suggested a community service project to a client in New York. His lawyer said, that's the greatest and most unique thing I've ever heard. I suggested it to another client in Milwaukee. The lawyer said, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Two very educated lawyers, both of them went to Ivy League schools. One said it was great, one said that it was terrible. You know what I told my client? Exercise and use your own judgment. You're smart, made a lot of money, built a successful business, educated guy, you made some bad decisions. Don't lose the decision-making and judgment that made you successful. You're going through a little blip through the criminal justice system. Not going to define the rest of your life. So that's how I'll close. Do not ask the judge for probation. He or she knows you want probation. They know you don't want to go to prison. Demonstrate to your actions, not words, why you're worthy of leniency. And that's why I think you will get the shortest sentence in the most favorable prison. Lastly, to learn more about sentencing mitigation, go to sentencingletter.com on the white collar advice site while there you will get access to chapter six from our book, Prepare, and you can learn in great detail about sentencing mitigation, and again, how you can self-evaluate and demonstrate why you are worthy of leniency. Thank you for watching, subscribe and like. Look forward to returning soon with another video. Goodbye.